Well, the first order way would be that it gives you many, many options of different kinds of texts and different kinds of encounters. So besides all of the, the different kinds of you know, narratives of somebody going places, very, very many different kinds of places for very di many different purposes, also in terms of genres, there are records of encounters where you have to, in a way, reconstitute or documents that precede encounters, like letters patent or charters or diplomatic letters that sort of set the conditions for a transaction that might take place or legislate you know, how a transaction can take place. So within the collection, you have all these different kinds of documents. You have all these different kinds of narratives and versions of how things go different representations of the self, of the other, and so on and so forth. And then you have another level, actually several other levels, but one level where the person who's organizing the collection, who's editing the collection, is saying, here is how I'll dispose the materials. Here are pathways through them that I'm going to make easier, and others which I may still exist, but I'm not going to highlight them or make them available. So. First, there's the condition of what, what is allowed to enter the, end, the collection, uh, where does it come from, where has it been accessed, what is it allowed to bring with it in terms of its original context, its original language, um, its original genre, purpose, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. what's the pathway that it's taken in order to get there. Um, and then once it's in the collection, what is it going to be made to look like, what title is it given, what running head is it given? What is it adjacent to? Um, what can it be compared with? Um, and there are sort of big organizing systems in the collection. The highest order organizing system is space. And so the collection more or less uh, reflects parts of the world. Uh, it's also organized by itineraries. I sort of voyages through a certain uh, part of the world or in a certain direction. Um, and so it's possible to think about um, the groups of materials that are organized together by the editor you know, through various paratextual means, pagination, physical boundaries of, of volumes. You can also think about them in terms of a spatial region outside the text and the kinds of relationships that have been established with it economically, demographically, you know, diplomatically and so on and so forth. Um, you can think about, and, and, and you can think about how is it seen. There are many, many different, of level, many different levels of evidence that can be considered at the same time. Um, and so, you know, you start out by thinking about some of these narratives as they're very spare. You know, it's a list, it's a legal document. But once you begin to think, more inventively, you know, outside the dimension of text criticism, there, there's so many layers of evidence that you end up being embarrassed for choice. Um, and finally, I would say it gives you the possibility of, and this has been one of the most compelling things for me as a scholar, it gives you the possibility and even the need, the imperative, to access knowledge and methods from any number of different disciplines from the physical sciences through to work in other languages, and also, in a way, the responsibility where possible to go to the place and speak to the community. You don't want to be talking about somebody as if they can't hear. Um, and so there are a lot of different interesting kinds of work to be done, and, you know, and then the challenge of understanding how to orchestrate them and how to lace them together. So this is why I think it's good to think with.